Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today's video is all about warm and resinous amber fragrances. And it's very interesting to me that I am actually doing this video because when I started my fragrance journey, I mean, my serious <laughs> fragrance journey, I did not like the note of amber. I don't think I had initially any amber fragrances in my collection, nor was I interested in trying any because whatever I did sample, I didn't like. I found them to be kind of cold, sharp, masculine, unappealing to me at all. And with time, I grew to love this note, but I don't love any type of amber. It has to be a specific type of amber to work for me. I really enjoy warm ambers, sweet ambers, smooth ambers. Uh, that's what I prefer. Kind of cold, sharp, masculine type of ambers I still don't like. So today I have a selection of, I think, 10 fragrances that feature the note of amber. And they feature it in different ways. Um, there will be a, a lot of uh, full bottles that I'm gonna show you, obviously featuring the type of amber that I really enjoy. There will be also a few that I wanna talk about that I don't have full bottles of because there might not be the right type of amber for me, but they are gorgeous nevertheless. They're amazing scents that are worth talking about. Anyways, let's just start going through these fragrances. So I'm going to start with one of the newer additions to my collection and my first fragrance from Kayali. This is Invite Only Amber 23. Um, hopefully you've seen my uh, full dedicated video on this fragrance. If you haven't, I'm going to link it somewhere up here. Um, like I said, this was my first purchase from this house just because this sounded like it would be something up my alley. And you can see that I still have it, meaning that I really, really like it. This is definitely my type of fragrance. This is kind of a gourmand amber scent. That's how I would describe it. So some of the notes in here are cherry, tobacco, honey, cinnamon, chocolate. There is rose in here. There is vanilla, oud, patchouli, sandalwood musk. I probably missed some of the notes. And the in the opening of this fragrance, I really do get sort of everything that's described in the notes. I get a cherry, I get tobacco, I get honey, it's definitely, definitely there with a bit of this chocolate hazelnut accord or spread or whatever is in here. So whatever is really listed in the notes, I do get all of this. And when it dries down, it, it really becomes um, deeper. It becomes a little bit darker. It becomes sweeter. So I do get that beautiful mix of sort of a sweet amber. I think I forgot to mention that amber is, of course, one of the notes in here. And that's what I really get. It's still a little bit uh, chocolatey. It is definitely woody. So there is oud listed in here, but I I don't really get oud. If it is here, it is so, so light. It almost gives me more of a woody touch ra rather than an oudy touch. Uh, there's tobacco in here again, pretty light. It just gives it a little bit of smokiness. So sweet, deep amber with a touch of smokiness and a touch of woods. That's what I get out of it in a dry down. This is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Uh, I have to say this is a winner for me. Next, let's talk about another beautiful amber uh, scent. This is Amber d'Alexandrie from Boucheron. Uh, this amber is very different. So, of course, in addition to amber, we also have vanilla, tobacco, benzoin, labdanum, musk, ambergris. And this one, when you put all of these notes together, really gives out the scent of apple pie. This really smells like sweet, 
kind of crumbly, slightly spicy uh, apple pie. That's that's really what I get out of this. So the amber in here is again very soft, very smooth, very sweet. Uh, it is not uh, very strong. I, I think um, benzoin and vanilla are kind of uh, stronger in this scent. So this is gorgeous, inoffensive. If, if you know, like me, you're kind of um, feel like amber can be a bit too sharp and a bit too masculine. I think this would be uh, a great amber to start with because it is very smooth and it is very sweet. So again, this is Amber D'Alexandre from Boucheron. Now, a few times I have been asked to talk about a great niche house, a Canadian niche house, house of zoologist. Now, I've never really talked about this house and there is a reason for that. I have sampled a lot of their fragrances, I think majority of their fragrances. And although I find the concept of the whole house very, very creative and very unique and very different, majority of the fragrances are just not for me. I did not like them. They just didn't work for me. But there is one fragrance from the house that I really, really like. And that is the fragrance I want to talk to you about today. Now, I have a sample. I don't have a full bottle yet. The fragrance I'm talking about is Camel. Now, this is a beautiful amber scent. And this one I would call very, very spicy amber scent. There are a lot of notes in here. There are dried fruits, dates, olibanum, myrrh, incense, amber, cinnamon, cedar, jasmine, orange blossom, vanilla, sandalwood, tonka, vetiver, a whole bunch of other things. And this really is very, very spicy. It's it, it sort of makes me think of being somewhere in the Middle East and uh, going to the market, you know, where they sell a ton of different spices. And I am walking, um, I'm walking along, I'm getting the whiffs of these different spices that are could be almost overpowering. That's what I'm getting in this fragrance. It's amber mixed with a lot of spices. There is a, a there is a touch of sweetness here, but I would not call this very sweet. Uh, the type of amber that's in here is a little bit uh, sharper and a little bit colder. So I think some might consider it uh, more masculine, although I find that um, it, it really warms up on the skin. In general, I should mention to me, Amber fragrances smell quite different in many cases on paper compared to the skin. I find that all of them bloom much better. They warm up a lot more on the skin. So I've learned that I have to test amber fragrances on the skin rather than on paper because to me, they smell very differently. And this one is no exception. I think it becomes much warmer when it is on the skin, but still I would not call this a warm amber. This is kind of a colder, sharper, spicier um, type of amber and overall has a very spicy touch and when it starts drying out, uh, drying down, sort of these um, dried fruits um, are coming out stronger and um, mixing together with the spices. So this one is beautiful. Uh, it's uh, it's been on my kind of want don't want list. You know, I can't I can't decide if I need a full bottle of this because although I love the scent, I think it's really beautiful. I have to be in the mood to wear it. This is a bit, like I said, a bit too spicy and a bit too powerful for me. Uh, although sometimes I'm in a mood to wear something like this. So I keep changing my mind. You know, I want a full bottle. I don't need a full bottle. So I keep going back and forth. But I think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous amber scent. Next, I want to mention two fragrances that I either just shared in a haul with you or I will share in an upcoming haul, depending on how uh, these videos get posted. The first one is from the house of Stefan Humber. Lucas, 
don't know if I pronounced it correctly. And this is called Takla Makan. Again, not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. This is my first fragrance from this house. Um, the bottle, I think, is, is very, very beautiful. Definitely kind of Middle Eastern looking. And I think that, that the idea is the idea behind this fragrance is to make it smell sort of like the desert. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. And that's kind of what it smells like. So the notes in here are benzoin, vanilla, labdanum, iris, sandalwood, patchouli, um, uh, cedar, musk, rose, bergamot. So there are actually no amber notes per se, but again, this fragrance makes me uh, feel like amber is here. It gives that kind of ambery touch. It is it is smooth and it is deep at the same time. It has a little bit of sweetness and it has a little bit of uh, spiciness and it even has a little bit of smokiness. And I think when it starts drying down, even a touch, a very slight touch of powderiness is coming through probably from the iris and it does have a bit of um earthy touch as well there are you know there are a lot of elements in this fragrance uh, i can kind of see how uh, all of the notes mentioned play a role in in this scent they kind of all add something to it to make it interesting it, it almost you know every time i get a whiff of this fragrance i get something slightly different. Uh, this is a really interesting, really complex scent that, that like I said, changes a lot, um, depending on, I, I don't know what, maybe on how it develops on the skin, maybe uh, on, you know, my body chemistry at the moment, maybe based on the weather, I don't know, but I get a lot of different things from this scent at different times, but overall, Although amber is not listed, it definitely gives me an ambery touch. Maybe because benzoin and vanilla kind of mix together to give that. Not sure, but uh, that's the reason I included it in this category is because I definitely feel like it has ambery aroma to it for sure. And the next one definitely has the note of amber. It's even in the name of this fragrance. This is from Fort and Manly and it's called Absolutely Amber. This is another first for me. I've never tried anything else from this house. And when it became uh, available, I really didn't know which one I wanted to try, but kind of settled on this one. And I think this was a really good choice. This is a beautiful, sweet, honeyed amber. I feel like honey is so, so strong in this scent. So honey is one of the notes. There's also rose, there is plum, there is amber, benzoin, labdanum, musk, cedar, vetiver. And when you spray this, or even when I smell this out of the bottle, the strongest note is honey. It is such a strong, strong honey almost like raw honey to me and then um uh, and then amber benzoin come out to play it has a little bit of woodiness and just a touch of smokiness but overall it's honey and amber that's what i get more than anything else it is very sweet it is uh i would almost call this kind of um playful amber if, if there is such a thing i think typically you would not describe amber scents as playful but this is to me the most playful amber scent uh, that i have just so fun and so sweet and so delicious but at the same time it is it is quite deep and it is quite thick this is really really gorgeous only if you enjoy very sweet scents because this is definitely on the sweet side Next one I want to mention is from the house of Luban, Luban, don't know, and this is called Idol. I don't have a full bottle of this yet, so I have this sample, but I have this on my wish list for sure. I actually sampled this 
in the spring, I think, uh, where I ordered quite a few um, samples from this house and there are quite a few that impressed me and this one was definitely one of my favorites. And, you know, I was just, I think, mostly waiting for the cold weather because I think these types of fragrances are better suited for colder weather, but I definitely have it very strongly on my wish list. This is so, so beautiful. And I think the bottle, which you're probably seeing the picture right now, the bottle looks amazing. It is so different, so unique, kind of strange, but I think very, very beautiful. But what does it smell like? So as I said, this is, of course, an amber scent. There are a lot of notes in here. There is rum, there is saffron, there's bitter orange, uh, there are woody notes, there's incense, uh, there's sugar, palm tree, leather, uh, labdanum, sandalwood, amber, of course. And at first, when, when I tried this, I thought, no, this is definitely not for me. This is very masculine. But again, I made the mistake of spraying it on paper and not on my skin. Because when I sprayed it on my skin, it became so, so different. It is definitely unisex, but I would not call it masculine. This is a boozy amber so amber is definitely here it's a warm amber but i would not call it very sweet and boozy elements are definitely present here so the fact that rum is here i can see that it definitely has um boozy element and i also feel like it has a bit of spiciness not very spicy nothing like camel from zoologist just a touch of spiciness is here and it's definitely woody. I can't say that I'm getting leather. No, I don't really, I don't really feel it. It's boozy, slightly spicy, warm amber. Very interesting, very complex scent. This is definitely on a more complex side, I would say. It's not easily describable scent. I think there are a lot of elements that are just blended together that are really uh, difficult to pick out on their own because they all just mix together to create this aroma. But this is gorgeous. I really, really love the scent. I think the bottle is just stunning, like a um, work of art, really. Uh, so unusual. I mean, I haven't seen any other bottles that look like this. And like I said, this is a gorgeous amber scent that I definitely have on my wish list. Okay, um, I think <laughs> I'm taking too long to talk about each scent. I have a few more, so let me run through these very quickly. The next one, of course, I had to, I had to include it in this video. This is from Maison Francis Corcajon. This is Grand Soir. I won't spend too much time on this one because I've talked about it a few times. You know that when I tried this originally in warm weather, I really didn't like it. And then when I tried it in the cold weather, I fell in love with it. So this one really, really weather dependent to my nose. It is very sharp and cold and masculine in warm weather, but it, it smells completely different in the cold weather for me. It becomes warm, it becomes sweet, it becomes enveloping, it becomes um, even seductive. This is a gorgeous amber scent. I mean, I think you've, most of you have heard about this one. So again, don't wanna spend too much time on it, but uh, if like me, you know, you thought that this was masculine at the beginning, give it a second chance. Make sure to try it on your skin and make sure to test it in the cold weather because for me, it just made the world of difference. Next one that I have is another one that you either saw in the same haul uh, or you will see soon. This is from Carolina Herrera Private Collection. It's called Confidentials Line or something like that. This is called Amber Desire. This one has amber, it has dates, vanilla, labdanum, and rose, and Basically, that's what it smells like to me. This is very sweet um, type of amber with um, dried fruit. So it says that there are dates in here. I, I don't know if I am getting exactly dates, but I'm getting some kind of uh, dried fruits added in. And a bit of rose is present in here as well. 
this is warm this is soft this is uh sweet this is beautiful um is it um extremely unique no and is it extremely powerful no i would say this is on a softer side so um to be honest, when I purchased this, I kind of thought this scent was going to be more powerful, more of a statement maker, and it turned out to be a softer type of scent. Doesn't make me like it any less. I do really like it, and I do really enjoy it. It just wasn't exactly what I, what I expected, but I still really, really love it. Next one I want to mention is from Giorgio Armani, and this is Sea Leopard Farm. This is so, so amazing. I mean, I can't say enough great things about this. This was such a big surprise to me because I've tried fragrances from Sea line. Um, I think majority of them, they were all nice. I mean, most of them were nice, but... You know, at the same time, to me, there was nothing so special about them. But this one, this one is very, very different. So this one has, of course, the signature black currant, which is present in all um, sea line. There is also incense. There is osmanthus. There is jasmine. There is amber, benzoin, vanilla, and patchouli. And this one is deep, dark, syrupy. Um, this to me feels like it's, it's a mixture of some kind of black currant jam together with red wine. That's what I'm getting here. It almost has slight booziness and definitely it's sweet and it's dark and it's deep and it's resinous and it's warm and it is so good. This is such high quality scent i i think this is amazing i know this is hard to find i i don't know i think it's discontinued i i don't even know when or where it was exactly available the only place i've seen it is on fragrance net it's amazing this is so so beautiful this this really needs to be brought back if it was discontinued or needs to be more widely available this is such a gem and I'm going to finish with one more amber scent that is kind of, um, I don't know, I would, maybe I would call it a cult classic. I know that this house sort of has a cult following. It's, it's very, very popular among some fragrance fans. <laughs> I don't know if I'm using proper terms. And I just had to try it for myself. Now, again, it's a fragrance that I don't have a full bottle of. I'm talking about Tower, and I'm definitely going to butcher the name, Le Air du Dessert Marcan. Again, I, I know I didn't say it correctly, but, you know, I will put the name on the screen and the bottle so you will know what I'm talking about. Uh, there are many, many fans of this fragrance, and I just had to try it for myself. So what do I think about it? So let's let's look quickly at the notes. It's coriander, pedigree, cumin, lavender, labdanum, jasmine, birch, uh, geranium, amber, cedar, vetiver, patchouli, oak moss. I even heard from some people that um, say there is um, some comparison between this and ivory root from Xerjov, which is, you know, one of my favorite Xerjov fragrances. Now, I would have to personally disagree. To me, there is no comparison between the two. This one and Ivory Root are very, very different to my nose. This one is very spicy and very earthy, and maybe even I would call it very dry. So amber that's in here is very dry kind of on the colder side and definitely spicy and earthy. I think that's how I would describe the scent. It is definitely not sweet. Um, I mean, I, I can see. Okay, let's go back to Ivory Root for a second. I, I guess one line of comparison that I see here is spiciness. Yes, Ivory Root is also very spicy and this one is very spicy, but uh, that's really it. Ivory root is very, very sweet. 
Um, this one is not sweet at all. This one is dry, whereas Ivory Root is kind of on the creamier side to me. So again, to me, they're very different. So I know many, many people love this, but although I can appreciate the complexity and the beauty of this scent, it is not really a scent for me. Now, I don't hate it, but I also don't like it enough to have a full bottle. It is just too dry and too spicy and um, there isn't enough sweetness for me. But like I said, I can definitely appreciate the scent for what it is. It is beautiful. It is complex. It is interesting. And I can understand why it has this cult following, why so many love it. And, you know, this is a scent that I'm really curious about. I'm really happy to have this sample. I'm going to continue testing it because I sort of feel like, you know, the more I try it, the more I'm starting to like it. So, <laughs> you know, don't be surprised if one day you see a full bottle. It happens to me sometimes, you know, a, a fragrance I might not like at first. And the more I test it, the more I start liking it, maybe even fall in love with it. So, it's very possible that it will happen with this fragrance because I can definitely see it growing on me a bit. But definitely at this point, it hasn't uh, reached that level where I need to have a full bottle. But I definitely wanted to mention it in this video because I think it's a really, really great amber scent. So there you go. This is my list of amber fragrances uh, that I either have in my collection or I have tried. Would love to know how do you feel about the note of amber and do you have any favorites featuring this note? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!